What is going on, everybody? We are back on it. Hunter Hunter, Chapter 380. Not too much from last episode, other than trying to kind of wrangle that guy's uh, teleportation pocket ability that you guys tried to explain in the comments. Um, and then you guys also let me know that the Mafia members that are on the ship are all illegitimate from the king. Um, some of them are grown, though, so like, how old? I <laughs> could go back and look at some of that. Um, so that's a pretty good clarification. I thought they were just random mob bosses. Like, why would they even hold allegiance to them? You know, why not just team up and try to take over themselves or something like that? But that was a pretty good information and catch. I had a couple of you guys explain it to me, but I'm still kind of hung up on the guy's teleportation um, and kind of the what he can and can't do with it. I gotta explain that there's pretty much no limit to kind of as far as distance goes. Um, but then, like, how is it set up? And if something is farther away, does it take him longer to get there? I think I had somebody say, like, if he had set up something in York New City, he could access it from the ship. But the gamble that he wouldn't want to take would be if the base, like, the door closet that he set up on the ship gets messed with and he's in York New City and then tries to come back to it, he won't be able to access it. Um, which is kind of the explanation I got. But I, I guess I'm trying... Have you guys ever watched um, the second uh, Matrix before? Um, what's the name? Is it Matrix Revolutions or... I forget the name of it, but the second Matrix. They have the, uh, the key maker. And he can open a door... And he'll be in this hallway with just doors on top of doors. And he could literally be anywhere. It's so like I have a door right behind me. If anybody else opens the door, it just leads to a bathroom. It's just a normal, regular bathroom. If I close the door and I open it with a special key, I'm in this hallway that has doors for miles. And these doors could take me to anywhere. So what you might think is a door that leads to a bathroom, I open it, and now all of a sudden I have endless doors. I can open one door all of a sudden, and I'm in Paris. I'm like, no, I don't want to go in there. I can open another one all of a sudden, I'm in Japan. I can open another one. I'm here. Like, I could be anywhere because I have, I'm allowed to access that hallway. Is that kind of what's happening with his ability? Is he has different kind of doorways set up, and he knows where each one leads? So, for example, he's on the ship he goes and opens the doorway. He could have he could have a door that he has access to back in his home city. He could have one in York New City. Um, he could have one um, by Heaven's Arena. Like he he can access it all like that. Is that the explanation of his abilities? And the only way the only downside is if somebody kind of reopens his door, he just can't go back through that door. I'm also curious how. The first time he ever came up with this ability, I mean, clearly it didn't happen, but what are the chances that, like, he doesn't get... There could be an instance, um, who knows how many doors he's had, I don't know if there's a limit. There could be an instance where he could get stuck in that, like, how I explained, like, that hallway with endless doors. If that's kind of where he's going, is kind of this limbo in between hacker hallway, what if all his doors got fucked with? Is he just stuck there forever? Is there a condition or something he can do to like, he has a like a home home base setup that the door will always open to? Because like if he's just got these like bathrooms and closets, like who's to say those aren't getting messed with on a daily basis? So a doorway he thinks he has. So I'm thinking like from the when he did this for the first time, you know, he opens a door. He's like, all right, this is the base. I'm gonna come out over here. How does he originally come out of something that he doesn't have set up? So for that, like, if for, for when he started it the very, very first time, um, you know, he goes in, makes it, goes in his hallway, decides to come right back out, because he doesn't have an entry point, it's the first time he's done it, and then just goes to a different one, and he's like, okay, boom, 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 I mean, now I have two doors. Who's to say, like, when he made that first door, came back out right through the same door he made? But can he do that? Doesn't that make the door unaccessible if he reopens it and closes it? So, like, if he goes into a closet, and that's, like, point A, and he goes into the hallway that he goes into. 
for the first time that he's made this, he doesn't have a door two, a door three, a door four. He just has the very, very first door he made. So he has to come back out to have other doors to access. But when he comes back out and opens that door again, because he has to get out of the room, it's the very first door he's made. Does it undo what he just made that door to be? Or does it have to be literally, it has to be somebody else that does that? Or if anybody, even him. Because if that's the case, how did he ever get away from doing one, you know? So say he comes back out, and then he makes a second door. So now there's two points of entry. Okay, boom, he made two points of entry. What if he goes through his original door? As soon as he goes in that hallway, somebody fucks with the door now. Okay, I can't go back out that way. And he only has a second endpoint. Somebody fucks with that door. <laughs> so is he stuck in this limbo? I, I don't know. Does it even matter? Who really knows? But that's kind of where I'm at with... um all that information but let's go ahead and jump into this i didn't really get many comments referring to anything else other than that um but yeah let's go ahead and get into it chapter 380 we're here today to deal with the atrocities with the atrocious crimes that have taken place on board in particular the series of killings that transpired on deck three are these just hunter association bodyguards or like who is this after three days at sea it's unlikely that stress from long-term confinement or some kind of cabin fever. Analyzing the crime scenes and looking at them from different viewpoints such as the victims, profiles, and motives and statistics, the objective of this murder was the murder itself, killing for killing's sake, almost sacrificial. The murder itself was the objective of, of this crime, as if it were a component for some kind of magic power. Oh. So here's the thing, though. Do I go straight down to this blob here, or do I go across? I'm going to go down. The possibility... No, I'm going to go across. The crime... The criminal's mumblings were probably the conditions for his power. The numbers are specified words he used to suggest some kind of ceremony or ritual. Taking all that into account along with the unique circumstances of the ship. The possibility that the multiple isolated crimes are in fact connected serial killings having to do with the seed urn ceremony for the succession of the next king is extremely high. So who are all these guys? They don't have the H's on their chest, so I'm kind of like, well, who are they? I cannot accept that. You mean to imply that the princes are behind these murders? Ridiculous. There's absolutely zero possibility that the princes have left the first deck. Besides the succession, war is a battle between the princes in the first place. What need would they have to kill so many regular passengers with no connection to them? Please, if you would hear me out to the end. If one of the princes is the culprit, then there is no problem. We would simply need to tailor up a true culprit and brush it under the table. During its journey to the new continent, this boat shall be, shall be the battlefield where the next king of the Kakin Kaken, destined to rule that continent, will be decided. In other words, the, the top priority of this ship above all else is the succession war. Until one final prince remains, all their actions are granted immunity, apart from directly killing the other princes. Yeah, I mean, they could literally get away with anything, and nobody's going to say anything, you know. What is uh, this little writing here we have in the border here? This paradox of the spear and shield make up the compound for the conjunct for the contradiction. On one hand, successors all possess succession immunity as the all-piercing spear of their royal privilege. But on the other hand, the murder of royalty is a capital crime protected by the impenetrable shield of the death penalty. So pretty much you can't you can't go after them. Um, with intent to kill because you're going to get put to death. And they can pretty much get away with anything because they are of royal privilege. It's because of this that two kinds of murders have become prevalent. Contradicted murders and inferred murders. This is a dope scene right here with the king and the skulls sitting on his throne. This incident could be considered a surmised murder, but then... We get back to the earlier problem. Why would they need to kill so many commoners? The answer, the answer to that lies in the black magic traits of the birthing jar ceremony. From the viewpoint, where's he getting all this information from? 
From the viewpoint of the politicians and statesmen who have continued to prosper since the founding days of this kingdom, it was all thanks to the ceremony. It would be a natural for it would be natural for them to believe they were gathering supernatural powers through the offering of human sacrifices. And this is a trend we see precedent for precedent for throughout human history across all countries in various cultures. Some good imagery here. This speech right here reminds me of like the imagery when we were getting the uh the rose bomb explained and they were showing, you know, poverty, people living, you know, wealthy, showing cities, countryside, and we were getting this like big overview political philosophy statement. By the same rationale, it wouldn't be too hard to imagine that someone who inferred their prince's intent would believe that a large amount of blood must be spilled in order for them to achieve their goals and grant supernatural powers. Because he's almost like hitting this on the head as far as sacrificing people um, in turn gaining supernatural abilities. Um, I don't know if I missed some somewhere, but this is almost like the the explanation that he's putting out is almost spot on to what is actually happening. Now we move on to the main topic. From here on out, the crimes will continue and they will increase. The thing is, what could you do? And when they exceed their critical point, the ship will sink. Oh my god. See what I'm talking about? How we got the imagery again? The panic and dismay of 200,000 people will give rise to, to paranoia and fear in the form of riots. All this imagery. This is a great detailed shot right here. It can't be. And this is just... um. I'm wondering if something like this was to happen. I don't think it is, but if it was... Who on this ship has, like, say, say riots break out? You know, it's always going to happen on the poor, lower, common levels first, right? It's going to start at the bottom and work its way up to the wealthy, because the wealthy and the the royalty will think they're, you know, they're immune. We can keep them away. We have security. We have an army. We have guns. How are they going to get up here? You know, that's how it always starts in like any kind of story. But if it was to get to that boiling point, are there any hunters? or spirit beast or anything that have abilities that could delete people by the masses. Um, I'm trying to think of abilities that we've seen kind of like a big bang or a gone punch or a Silva spirit bomb. Um, is there anybody that we know that has an ability that if hundreds of, if, hundred to thousands of people were charging the upper levels and not saying it's going to turn into this just slaughtering but it's like we get overrun up here or we keep them out kind of curious i mean we've never seen gang's ability or beyond have we seen anybody on this ship with a large scale ability that could just wipe out a hundred hundreds of people in one go I don't even think any of the troop members have anything. I mean, we never know what's in Krollo's book, but... I mean, Franklin's got his emitter bullets. I guess he could kind of... I mean, shit. We have seen him clear a whole a, uh, uh, ballroom before, so I guess if you lined him up at a door and just let him... Is there anything else? Oh, Phaeton. Franklin and Phaeton with his... Yeah, I guess there are a couple people that, like, if we needed to, we could clear it. I don't think anything like that's going to happen. I'm just spitting off the top of my head. The bodyguards and royal army on board number roughly 2,000. Simple calculation puts that to about one bodyguard for every 100 passengers. But in reality, 40% of those bodyguards are on the first deck, about 800, and another 600 on the second. 70% of our security is assigned to the upper class decks. Public safety and order on the fourth and fifth decks is left in the responsibility of the Mafia. Currently, there would be 300 people to every one of our security personnel. If anything were to happen, the soldiers on the lower decks would essentially be power. Oh, yeah, I mean, what are they going to do? We cannot afford to wait another moment. We must put an end to these serial killings and restore safety, order, and peace of the mind of the passengers. But how precisely 
you suggest we accomplish this. The most effective way would be to interrupt or otherwise suspend the succession war through the... Though that would be... I was about to say that's not going to happen. The second best countermeasure would be a reorganization and redeployment of the royal army. How are you going to have any say of what the royal army does? You're just going to spread them out across the levels and have them keep watch. Assign 800 troops to decks 3 and lower and put in a proposal to increase our numbers. Thing is, like, they can't increase, um, they don't have any current numbers to, um, they can't bring in the cavalry, you know? They can't bring in, like, oh, let's bring in another 2,000 troops to help, like, what they have on the ship is what they have. I guess they could. If, I mean, it's the royal family and the royal army. Is their entire their entire army, stronghold, cavalry, anybody that's going to come save them? Like, are they all on the ship? They can't call in. I'm sure if something were to seriously, seriously hit the fan and they had to get, like, a helicopter fly or jet something to get a couple more hundred thousand troops they could if they needed to. But that's just not going to happen. That's just too much. The life or death of the kingdom of Kaken rest on this. I'm not trying to threaten or frighten you with those words. I believe we propose this to the first prince, who is the central pillar of the kingdom's defense. He'd readily approve. We have more than sufficient data supporting these actions to ensure he should be able to expect results. Of course, in the event that the official minutes containing the rough outline of this plan should somehow not be reported to the first prince, well, you would be the ones in the worst situation. So who is he talking to? Current royal, uh, royal army? God damn it, it feels like we've sold our soul to the devil. It can't be helped as long as we explain about Nen abilities. This is the best we can do. To regular people, the threat of the unknown is enough to detonate the bomb. Yeah. Telling a bunch of regular Joes that there's a bunch of serial killers with superpowers around is completely beyond their range of understanding or acceptance. Look at this dude. You've extended the fuse as much as you could. All that's left is to evacuate as many people as possible during that time and focus on the defusing their explosives. I'll pull together all the association hunters in charge of guarding outside the prince's residential quarters and have them enforce a gag order regarding the upper cock and members involved in this incident. The fuse that burns towards the destruction, somehow I get the feeling it's much shorter than I've ever imagined. We have so much going on right now with... Uh, Prince is learning then the succession battle, the troop on the move trying to find Hisoka, and then this serial killer we're playing bingo, bring me as much bodies for points as you can. Oof. And this is the monitor room. It records surveillance over all the key areas of the fifth deck. Of course, what includes this room as well. Here's the footage of the man that brought the warehouse keeper with him. Oh. Through the confusion of their dispute, it's clear he's trying to open the door towards the inner area, but it was locked, so he gave up and escaped through the door he came in from. He did his best to ensure that his face wouldn't be caught on camera. Do you have any footage? Oh, shit. We, okay, we've totally skipped. Okay, we're back with the troop. Do you have any footage of inside the warehouse? The cameras are only installed on the entrance. Of course they are. You were the only three people that entered or left today outside of our own family's men. Rewind to yesterday and pull up a list of the non-family people that entered or exited then. It's highly possible that the culprit came to case the area. And I was told that this guy here, the Nove wannabe lookalike, has got some skill. I don't know what that means. I was just told that, you know... He could dabble if need be. <laughs> the cameras were installed the day before we embarked. The luggage was already loaded before then. Uh, if someone entered as a laborer, they wouldn't have been caught on the monitor. I'm not exactly expecting much. But to say he could have planted that door there, well, they said he, you know, was trying to. They caught him on camera, didn't see his face, so I doubt that was him. And I doubt he was a worker. At any rate, they come from that direction if they were trying to open that door, that is. Do you want to see what's inside? 
Can't say I'm not interested, but I don't expect you to offer for free. So how about an exchange for the for the head of the person killing your family's men? Very well. As of now, these three will be joining the surveillance rotation. Whoa. We didn't... I didn't volunteer. I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> yes, sir. Make sure to show them the ropes. I'm underling boss Sudonki. Got it. Roughly how many Cha family members are on this boat? At most, I'd say roughly 250. I can't say for sure about other families, but I'm... I'd assume they're around the same, too. Whoa, it's the spiders. There's so much I want to ask them, but I can't do that in front of the other underlings. They gave these guys such shit. <laughs> um, character designs. I wonder if I can create some kind of chance to be alone with them one-on-one. -on -one. Food, is, food is more style and retort bags you can get from the stockpile. You can eat whenever you want. If you pay money, you can head to the cafeteria on the fourth deck, do your break time. I wonder if they'd give me an autograph. Dang, they're really uh, fanboying over them. So why would the troop want to be involved in this? Just to kind of get information on what's going on. I mean, we know what the end goal is. Fine, he's Soka. But what, does snooping around with them and joining their security team hopes to gain Sphinx... Nobu and Franklin, I mean Sphinx, Nobu, and Phaeton, what? Favors from them in the end as far as maybe reaching higher levels or finding out any information that they can give? Because I doubt they would just willingly sign on to this just to see what's inside there, you know? So how about in exchange for the head of the person killing your family's men? So he, they say they'll go after the guy if you can show us what's in here. And they say, alright, deal. They're part of our security team. Oh gosh, look at this big-ass diagram. Yeah, they were all the way down here in the depths. A stowaway in possession of a dangerous weapon is on the loose and is currently hiding somewhere on board. Whoa. Is this... They just they didn't just announce this over the loudspeakers, did they? Under no circumstances should you leave your room or open your door unless instructed by the military. What, this isn't on the... What levels did they just release this information on? Meals will be scheduled by area. You will be escorted to the cafeteria by the military. We repeat, please do not leave your room without permission. Using human, wa using human wave tactics, we will begin investigating from deck three. Thoroughly search all the rooms in the residential area and bring forth anyone suspicious. Anyone without a ticket, even a child, will be restrained. Please cooperate with the Army's operation. The stowaway has escaped and is hiding so we're just out here we're just gonna go room by room so these guys is this confirming that they got benjamin's clearance or the ones we were originally talking to were part of the army that i guess the hunters just have what the hunters just have access to a couple hundred of the royal army you know just to you know help holy shit that's a huge shot hey raise your hands and turn around slowly Oh shit. Did you not hear the emergency announcement? Who is this? Who is this? <gasps> no, I haven't scrolled down yet. Who is this? Okay, okay. Oh, what the hell are you two plotting over here, huh? Hmm? Can't be trusted. Here's the thing. I love Illumi. He's been one of my favorite characters. And people have been saying to me, you know, why would Illumi work with Hisoka? You know, if he says he's here to hunt Hisoka, he's here to hunt Hisoka. He wouldn't betray Backstab. I don't believe that shit for two seconds. I do, th I think Illumi does what benefits the family or Illumi at the moment in time. Currently, right now, he is on a mission to help the Phantom Troop kill Hisoka. But I think if if we saw an off-screen, if there's been an off-screen conversation or something set up that was, yes, help them kill me, but blank, 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 Illumi would consider taking the blank, 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 given, you know, XYZ circumstances. So, I don't know. We'll see. I was sleeping and didn't notice. Where'd, where's your ID ticket? It's in my inside pocket. 
to tell me he's not. I mean, there's so many people surrounding them. There's no way y'all try to take all them out. I mean, they could. I mean, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We got about 20. Tell me they're not about to kill them. This is just going to make things so much harder. Please don't. Pardon me, but why is a V2 like yourself in a place like this? Business V2. What's a V2? Again, I apologize though. This ID may have been a free pass for you to go anywhere aboard this ship up until now. Oh, he has like a V2 written is very VIP. So he has a pass that I guess lets him kind of go from level to level. Where'd he get his hands on that from? Due to quasi-martial law, the passageway connecting decks 2 and 3 are under surveillance and freely traveling between the two is impossible. It will likely stay that way until we reach the new continent. Please allow me to escort you back to the upper deck. Huh? I'm fine. Oh, God. Please, just don't. <laughs> don't do what I know you're about to do. I told you, didn't I? I'm on business. I'm staying here, but... Corporal Misery. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. He's a hunter as well. I see. Uh, I'm... I don't think this is going to turn into a mass murdering spree, but I would have been very interested if these two Zodiacs didn't show up how this would have gone. And how did he know he was a hunter off the bat? I mean, Alumi is a hunter. But the fact that he, I mean, maybe he knows all the hunters that are on board or something like that. I'm not sure. This is awkward. The spiders, are they on board? Yes, all of them. So now is like, is he working for the spiders, but then also being a loyal hunter to the Zodiacs and the association? But then also probably loyal to whatever his self-motivations and the family? I don't know, man. Brother. Whoops, what can I say? I'm an honest person, so I always end up answering anything I'm asked. Yeah, Kaluto, he done ratted y'all's asses out. Sorry, but I have to, de to decline any further comment. As long as I'm on business, I have a duty of confidentiality to protect. Oh, sure you do. Understood, but with that announcement, everyone's been placed on alert in their rooms. IDs are able to be scanned for their residence unit number, and those without one will be apprehended and restrained. If you two log your presidential unit number and your IDs to a room in the central police station, you'll be able to remain on deck three. Very well, but if possible, I'd like a solitary cell with a shower, <laughs> just so he can sleep and shower. I'm not restraining you or arresting you, so you'll have an individual room for lodgings the same as us. Unfortunately, though, all the police force members share a bathroom and toilet. We were just on our way there, if you'd like to join for now. I don't like this, man. <laughs> I feel like at any moment, a Lumi could just flip a switch. We had already confirmed that the fifth son of the Zoldic family, Kaluto, had joined the spiders. But the oldest son as well? Just what are they planning? Exactly. What are they planning? What were y'all two talking about over there? Just hanging out as siblings? Or what are we uh, plotting over here? Mm -hmm. The Zoldic family and the spider's objective is one thing. But what's even more worrisome of all is if Karapika were to discover that they're here. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's already been leaked. Like, people heard that they're on board. Like, not just him. Karapika is in the, is in the dead middle of the complex inter-winning of Nen Beast, Prince's plots and schemes that is the succession war. Losing focus for even a moment could cost him his life, and the spiders are enough to shake him to his very core. But why are the spiders on this ship? It can't be. Are the spiders after revenge against Karapika? Alumi is a fellow classmate of Karapika's from the Hunter Association. I wouldn't call them classmates. I mean, we took a test at the same time, but we're not... <laughs> you know? If the spiders know of Karapika's actions as a hunter, then they could have prepared and arranged everything to make their way here. Should I tell Karapika or not? Misa, I discovered someone suspicious without an ID, but there's a bit of a problem. What is it? Whisper, whisper. What did you say? Watabo Aginta, take care of them. For me. I've got to head back to headquarters for now. She's safe and unharmed, right? She's fine. We've got hunters securing the room. But it seems a few soldiers may have noticed her as well. 
issue a gag order on them, put them on house arrest, whatever it takes. You can relax now. Please explain what's going on. Is this homegirl testing her doors out and shit? Yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty damn good chapter. Just with the... I mean, the the last half of the chapter really sold me. Everything from here... Because this is what I've been kind of like headcanoning, theorizing, is what the hell does a loo mean? Like, I know they're always like sticking to their job, you know, they're professionals, We're not, we don't just get hired for work, but then go rogue, just because, you know, we don't like to, but... Haven't we seen Alumi make a decision before? Like, when he was with the troop, but then also hired by Hisoka? But then also, it's just a, it's, you can't trust what's going on. I love them as characters, but you can't trust what's going on. I literally thought if given the chance, he would have tried to kill all these soldiers. That could have been messy. I don't even know if he has a mass killing ability like that. We know he has his pins. Um, and the brother would have helped for sure, but like how many people could he have hit at one time? Good question. So the last chapter was great. Homegirl out here trying her portals and doors and shit. Um, I've had confusion. I've had people tell me it's her ability. It's her spirit beast ability. It's got to be her ability. Because how would she be able to play around with it like that? Unless it somehow responds to her wants or emotions on command like that. Got Nobunaga, Sphinx, and Phaeton over here joining a squad. Which I guess in turn to help them get any kind of information or access to extra levels or rooms. Um, and then we've got Miza over here. Oh no, his his name's not Miza. Miza is the uh Misa, Miza. Who knows? Misa over here giving his speech about how complete destruction and chaos is going to happen if they don't figure this out. But then it's also like you know how do they go about this without causing a panic? So these guys here, these are the Royal Army at the Hunter's disposal. I guess they got you know X amount of men commissioned to them at the same time for any kind of issues that might go on um but that's pretty much all we got we didn't get any like new abilities or who does what or anything spirit beast wise um just scrolling through here to see breakdown of the troops and who to report to i'm gonna go talk to benjamin the sphinx phaeton and nobu stuff here guys fanboying over them um so this over the intercom was this just blasted on the lower levels because i feel like the lower levels were like the more poor desperate people are that would cause a panic what levels did they blast this on two and three this wasn't ship wide was it i'm not sure um because didn't they say they were going to work their way down I, I, I feel like it caused a lot of panic to let every level know that but and yeah this stuff right here man We'll, we'll 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 see how that plays out. Um, I don't know what he wants. He says he's there on business. You know, over there letting out confidential information. But he says when he's on business, he's on business. But everybody's on business until they're not. <laughs> so I don't know if it's like, you know, agree to kill me unless it looks like I'm not going to get the satisfactory fight that I want, then help me until I do get to that point, then try to kill me, but don't, ah, I don't know. We'll kind of wait to see how it plays out and then how her ass made it all the way out there. Um, Yeah, just leave it there. Pretty, pretty solid chapter. Patreon members, I'm going to let you guys see this on Sunday because we're actually able to get a couple videos stacked up. So we're recording this on Friday, but you guys will get this on Sunday instead of Monday. Um, So just a day earlier. Um, and we have what? What do we have? Nine left? Ten left. One, two, three, four, five, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Oh, it's three ninety one. I always thought it was three ninety. Okay. Eleven left. We'll keep uh we'll keep pushing along, cranking them out. Appreciate it guys. Feel free to explain any of that that's not spoilerish. Um trying to keep up the likes and the comments on the videos. It's a good dialogue and back and forth. And we will keep uh cranking it out. Um, Death Note should be live on YouTube Tuesday, Patreon members. Um, you guys will get your avatar and three episodes early and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, everybody take it easy out there. Like, share, favorite, subscribe, and as always...